All right, joining us now with reaction to my opening monologue, my interview with Carter Page is the House Intel Committee Chairman, California Congressman Devin Nunes. Congressman, the Nunes memo has now been totally, completely um, corroborated by you. And people like Adam Schiff, to me, have been proven to be one of the biggest liars in the country. I won't drag you into politics, uh, that, that political commentary. Let me get your reaction. Number one, it was the bulk of information used to get a FISA warrant. Clinton's mm -hmm. dirty dossier, full of Russian lies. You just heard Carter Page. Your thoughts? Start with most people in the media never even bothered to read our three page memo that was designed to be just a short compilation to protect sources and methods because we only wanted to get out the main points, which were what? That they used the dossier, the dirt from the Clinton campaign, to make up the bulk of the FISA application. Matter of fact, they lead with it in the FISA application. So that's what we really wanted to get out to the American people because we believed at that time that most Americans would agree, and I think they, they would agree if journalism wasn't so dead, as you said in your monologue. Most Americans, when you talk to them, when they're not watching the other cable news networks, and you talk to them about, is it okay for me as a politician to go out and, and pay someone to dig up dirt on my on my opposing candidate, whether whether it's running for president I, you know, or governor or something else, and then feed it into the FBI, an FBI that's controlled by my own party. That only happens in Banana Republic. So that was the point of the memo. Uh, and it's sad that the media has failed to cover it. But what's even more surprising now is now that we've been totally vindicated with the release of this FISA, just the pieces of the FISA applications over the weekend, you continue to see the media they're going absolutely crazy. And I've, I've never seen anything like it. And I just, I think you're, like you said, journalism's dead in this country. And I, I don't know what to do about it. You know, what is ironic in all of this is Hillary funnels money through a law firm. They hire an op research firm. And I have no problem with op research, that's politics. Then they hire a foreign national. I thought foreign nationals weren't supposed to impact our elections. But the dossier, according to Steele himself, in an interrogatory in Great Britain. He says it's raw intelligence, never verified, never corroborated. But everybody that signed off on that warrant signed off on unverified, uncorroborated Russian lies that were literally designed to really steal an election after they rigged an investigation into what is irrefutable crimes incontrovertible evidence of obstruction and a violation of the Patriot by Hillary. Well, I'm you, just wondering, can... where is this, how does, our, how does our constitutional republic survive? Well, it, it, it can't survive without a, it cannot survive without a free and open press actually doing their job, right? So, so, so let's just talk about the obvious thing that, that's out there that you're alluding to, and that is that that the very thing that the Mueller investigation is all about is seeing if the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians to get dirt on Hillary and use it against her. Now, we actually know that that is exactly what Hillary Clinton did. Hillary Clinton paid people, went through intermediaries that got dirt from Russians to use it against Donald Trump. Yeah. I mean, th that's, that's what happened. So let's start there. But then... Let's go with some of the other nonsense that you're seeing now. You actually have people out there in the media, mainstream media, that are now talking about, well, the regs don't necessarily say that you have to, to verify all the evidence. Well, look, I, I think that's crazy talk. You, you absolutely should have to verify and validate the evidence that you're using to have probable cause when you go to a secret court to spy on an American citizen. But they fed the but, court Russian lies bought and paid for by the opposition candidate, and they purposely didn't inform the court. No and court would have approved these warrants if they knew the truth. They, they went out of their way not to do it. So that's another point that they've been trying to make. So they went out of their way. Instead of just saying, look, candidate two paid for this, paid for this dirt on candidate one. Candidate two would have been Hillary Clinton. That would have been a very simple way to describe it in the FISA application before the judge. Now, here's something else that, that actually my colleagues, uh, Mr. Gowdy and Mr. Ratcliffe from Texas, who, who did a lot of these FISA warrants in his career uh, and has, has had the opportunity to look at these uh, in quite detail. 
he continually makes the point, which is a very good one, it's not so much how wrong it is, what they put into the FISA applications, that's, that's really bad, but what's even worse is the exculpatory evidence that they left on the cutting room floor. So wow. for example, for, for example, there's something really important. If, if you had the, the information that, that you have with, with, with Bruce Orr, okay, who's at the heart of this because his wife was working for Fusion GPS, the Bruce Orr information, uh, he knew that Christopher Steele didn't like Trump and didn't want Trump to win. The FBI had that in September. His wife helped put it together. That's right. Uh, what you did is, is to help this Democratic Republic survive. I actually worry about this abuse of power. I worry about a corrupt media. We're not going to stop on this program. Thank you for all you've done, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.